In this video, we've got some Vauxhall Viva fun and almost 20 years apart as well. This is a 1965 Vauxhall Viva HA Deluxe and this is a 1982 Bedford HA van, also based on the HA Viva. So while well, the saloons ended production in about 1966, the vans lived on until 1983 and this is a very good representation of the end of the line. So we're going to have a fun time exploring the differences between the two and then taking each of them for a drive. So we'll start with the older car, the uh, saloon here, uh, the Viva HA, Vauxhall's first baby car launched in 1963 to um, much fanfare, N reckoned to be a jolly little car to drive against some very stiff competition, uh, Anglia 105e, uh, the Austin 1100s as well. There was a, a lot of rivalry in that very, very busy small car sector. But uh, yeah, I think the styling for a start is nice. It's nothing excessive. It's not a particularly classy shape, I don't think, but it is neat. And I think neater than its Opel Cadet stable mate. We've got some little fins at the back, nothing too extreme. It's very pretty combination lamp units and there we go deluxe so uh, we'll explore exactly what that gets you in time but yeah just a, a very nice little car very happy little face and it's astonishing but really these were in production for only a handful of years and yet the van lived on uh, until the early 1980s extraordinary so under the bonnet a new small four-cylinder engine uh, 1057 cc i think it was originally but i think there was a 1.2 option uh, for the uh, ha viva this fantastic contraption is a remote brake servo but uh, from what i can see it looks like the uh, brake is there this pipe then feeds into this master cylinder here and the brake booster is here and then boosts the brake pressure out single circuit brakes by the look of it these very long heater hoses oh that one's nice and warm uh, tiny little free branch manifold on this four cylinder engine dynamo down here as well to generate the electricity tiny little fan big chunky radiator and uh, a big chunky radiator necessary because these were actually assembled in both new zealand and australia where it can get um, a fair bit hotter i love the screen wash bottle here a little plastic bag and uh, you know we've got posh luxuries like a heater i mean this is an age when this sort of thing was still an optional extra but yeah a very hardy little engine uh, i think and obviously went on to a much longer life but uh, yeah have, have a look at that engine bay and we'll compare it to the van and how it compares is um well not so very different really uh, we've still got the same sort of four cylinder engine but this is now up to 1256 cc so it's the same as used in the um, hc viva but we've got no brake servo in this car we've got drum brakes all round we've got the lockheed master cylinder there no servo you've just got to try and stop as best you can and believe me the stopping power is not superb dinky little carburetor it would have been restricted on some of these as well the um, british telecom or the preceding gpo definitely like to um, restrict the cars and reduce their power output even further i mean it's not a load of power anyway but they didn't trust their engineers moving to the boot now oh, there we go, we've got deck chairs at the ready, we've got the fuel tank on this side and the spare wheel on the other. Dinky little wheels and of course you can access the lamps very easily back here. There's no trim panels but I think that's quite a useful amount of space for a small car. Certainly a bigger boot than the BMC 1100. Right, heading indoors. Check the doors. Oh, solid, solid. And uh, one difference you'll notice is that we've got opening quarter lights uh, on the saloon, which we didn't get in the van. Uh, there's uh, vinyl seats, finest vinyl, lovely steering wheel cover on this example. Clang, all very solid, but a little tinny. And uh, ahead of us, we've got a fuel gauge, uh, ignition and oil, and then perhaps some models had a water temperature gauge. This one just has the gear layout, which we'll actually see is exactly the same in the van. Speedo goes all the way up to 90 miles an hour. 
lovely um, horn push here in the middle, uh, I think. No, it must be on there. There we go. Good meep. Um, we've got uh, light controls over here. So side lights, headlights, very solid, robust switches, and uh, the windscreen wipe control. We'll get there. Down here, manual screen wash. Got to pump, pump it yourself. Uh, down here, slightly offset. You'll note the offset from the pedals to the steering wheel. Uh, the pedals are a bit over that way because obviously we've got a gearbox here and a short stubby gear lever. One of the best things about Vivas, very precise stubby little gear lever. And like I say, we've got the optional heater. So there we go. Very, very luxurious. And a few things stuck to the metal dashboard, uh, various shows and uh, this lovely um, period advert, Vauxhall Viva. We know there's loads of space down here. Uh, there is the obligatory clothes peg and uh, that is to keep the choke on although that one actually seems to stay out so that's not too bad that is your choke control and maybe it's not very variable no oh yeah maybe finer adjustment is achieved with the clothes peg a cigarette lighter as well and uh, yeah lovely vinyl door cards it's um, a really pleasant place to sit looks even got a little document wallet there we've got an interior light is that an interior light Looks like it should be, nonetheless it doesn't seem to illuminate, and a tiny little rear view mirror. We've also got wing mirrors mounted outside, funnily enough, on the wings. And so the question is, how does the van differ from the saloon? And, uh, and the differences are immediately apparent. Obviously we're into the 1980s now, so they've tried to de-chrome somewhat. So we've got a black painted grill, we've got black wipers, no chrome trim on the uh, windscreen at all. The quarter lights are now fixed, but I would draw your attention to this design quirk I'd entirely forgotten about. If I open the window just a bit, you can still flick your cigarette ash out of this cutout in the window here. So even though the quarter light doesn't open, you can still um, smoke away to your heart's content. Different times, people. But I will say, I think the um, HA van is a lovely bit of design. I think it's a very pretty design and uh, lovely rear lights as well. Not too dissimilar from the Escort van, but uh, I remind you this came first. The van was launched in 1964 and uh, Pembroke Coachworks is um, Hayden's former business, the owner of this vehicle. And uh, yeah, he, again, he got the skills to turn this van around. It was a considerable restoration case. Uh, it belonged to a coal mine in Newcastle Emlyn, not too far away from here. But lovely little dainty wheel trims. And uh, yeah, I think a very nice piece of design, albeit quite a dated design for 1983. But really the HA Viva was replacing the Morris Minor van for a lot of people. Uh, Minor vans lingered on just into 1972, I think. Uh, so compared to a Minor van, this felt like a major leap forward, I imagine. So, like many cars of this era, including the Morris Minor, there is nothing securing the seat to the floor. Uh, you just tip it, oh, and then jump in, and the door shuts itself, apparently. And uh, it's a little cosy here. I've got the, um, I've got a bit of headroom, so that's all right. But uh, knee room, I'm a little short of back here. But again, I think part of the deluxe specification is opening rear windows but it's very windy out there i don't think i want them open uh, no heated rear window but we have got a nodding dog oh wow i'm just reading um hayden's own fact sheet on this car purchased from arthur bassett of swansea that was the dealer on 1st of july 1965 by a mr morgan of pont henry near Llanelli. it was then passed on to his wife last used 1981 stored under cover until 2010 Gosh, so it's done a genuine 69,000 miles now. Hayden's done 8,000 of those. Destined for the scrapyard, but thankfully saved. And it's a deluxe fitted with the optional extras of a brake servo and front disc brakes. Ooh. Dismantled, sandblasted and treated the Viva before it was resprayed at Pembroke Coachworks, which is his business and final reassembly. Engine rebuilt by a good friend and has been back on the road 10 years and his name Vera. So we'll have a quick check of the uh, load area. I may be old, but I still get hot. And uh, there we go, the door doesn't quite seem to securely stay there. But uh, there's certainly a useful amount of space in here. 
and uh, it's got all sorts of goodies. That's the fuel tank tucked away there, so the fuel tank actually eats into the um, load base space. But uh, yeah, a, a useful little van. See how things compare inside. It's still a fairly um, robust affair on the doors, but let's just take in the seats first of all. How cute is that check pattern? Uh, there is a problem with the seats, which we'll get to very shortly. But look how little has changed from the HA we were driving earlier. Yes, there's a big plastic steering wheel with the Bedford logo, Bedford being the commercial arm of Vauxhall, effectively. Uh, but we've still got exactly the same switches over here. So even in 1982, when this example was built, we've still got a rocker switch for the windscreen wipers. Very, very old hat. Indicators on a revised stalk out of the HC Viva. Another Vauxhall's with well, the choke is now over here. And uh, we've also got a fog light, um, which is um, uh, must be fitted. It's mandatory by this stage. Still got the screen wash on a little pump handle down there. It's trying to get you a view. So that's your screen wash. There we go. I'm going to pop the ignition on and we'll oh, start the engine actually. And look at that overlap. It's pretty good overlap, but look how, I mean, that blade isn't quite touching the um, windscreen properly, which isn't helping, but uh, the, the, the overall wiping pattern is perhaps a bit low, even if it was wiping to where it should do, that's quite the area unswept. And still single speed as well. You know, it's got the very 80s um, strip um, sunscreen or sun visor, very, very of their time. It's even got an extension. Oh, look at that. Oh, hello, BMW. Uh, so um, optional extras are plenty. We have got a heater, all luxuries, and we have apparently got an animal siren horn. I don't know what that's all about, but uh, we'll just test. Yeah, it's got a regular horn as well. What does this do? Okay, I don't know why it's got that, but it does have that fitted apparently. Uh, that's the door release. Down there, very plain vinyl door cards. But yeah, let's talk about these seats. Yeah, the biggest problem with these seats is they're down there. They're not even coming up to my shoulder blade. So in a rear ender, you're going to be in all manner of trouble. Uh, so forget head restraints. They don't even come up your back properly. So uh, that is a bit of a downside. I think the saloon is the same, but I kind of let the saloon off because that was 1965 and this is 1982. Um, I would frankly expect something a little better, at least in an escort van, uh, another rival of the uh, early uh, 1980s, you'd definitely have a seat coming higher up your back and you'd probably get head restraints on all but the base model. So um, yeah, less than ideal. I got my um, Halfords aftermarket seatbelts fitted, although this should have had seatbelts from new, I think, in, in 1965. That was the first year for seatbelts were mandatory in the front of cars. Rear seat belts wouldn't be mandatory until 1987. So uh, start the engine. Very smooth, very nice. Uh, screen wash, I've got to pump it. There we go, going everywhere. Uh, give the wipers a test. Good overlap, no triangle of doom. Uh, one speed. There is one speed of wipers, that is it. Uh, so not exactly spoiled for choice, but uh, select first. Away we go, a fair bit of transmission noise, huge steering wheel, which helps keep the um, steering nice and light. The Viva very much designed with women motorists in mind, which seems a bit sexist um, looking back, but uh, I think it was, at the time, quite revolutionary to have a car that was very much designed to be easy for women to drive. That meant the steering had to be light. The brakes had to be, ooh, jeepers. <laughs> responsive. That's a bit more responsive than I was expecting, to be fair. The, ge the gear lever had to be nice and precise and, you know, not one you could f get lost in. So, uh, yeah. On that score, very successful, and I think the Viva particularly encouraged Ford to work that much harder on the Escort Mark I. 
they designed that to be very very simple to drive too let's give this uh, big truck some room oh there's a big old army truck oh i love the indicator that's beautiful the indicator indicator yeah the brakes are a bit um full on they are uh, potent big way from the texaco man there Down the Denby Road. Quite a wide gate getting over to third there. Uh, do the window up. They're quite a revvy little engine. But it picks up speed quite nicely because you know it's a fairly light car. But as can often be said of little cars of this era, by an indicated 50 miles an hour, it's already starting to sound a little on the busy side. That's a, a bit thrashy, really. So uh, I'm not even going to take her up to the limit of 60. I think that would be asking a bit much. Got rack and pinion steering, although I'm feeling the car getting blown around a bit in the wind. And it's that rack and pinion steering and uh, also the independent front suspension uh, made it very common for people to take the front suspension out of these and put them in kit cars allied no doubt to a Jaguar back axle but this is very cheery very revvy but very cheery because this was a time people weren't generally bombing up and down motorways very much and if you were doing that you would buy an appropriate vehicle this is a, a little town car, really. But there's a bit of wind noise, it's not actually too bad. And of course, a very tractable engine as well. It means it pulls well at low revs. But yeah, that transmission noise, that is so... Viva, and not just Viva, Chevette as well, which I think used the same gearbox. And one of the big failings of Vauxhall, uh, the HA Viva only existed for a few years, quickly replaced by the HB. Fever, but the HC was really not moving the game on at all. It was, for all intents and purposes, the same car as the HB. Just a little snickety gear lever, that's lovely. So I haven't got a window in the back to attach you to, so you're a bit further forward than in the uh, saloon. Uh, I will just say one thing, I noticed more in this than the uh, Viva saloon. The steering wheel is off centre, off kilter. And I think that remained throughout Viva production. I think the HC is the same. In other words, this side is closer than this side. It's not square on to the driver. Also the pedals quite offset to the right to clear the gearbox down here. But nonetheless, we shall get underway. and see if it makes the same noises as a saloon. The clutch is very sharp on this van. Yeah, it's a little quieter, but it is still very much the same sort of noises going on down there. But if anything, I think the ride is even better in this. And that is something that was said, that the ride of the Bedford was better than the Escort. So. Uh, Otherwise, yeah, that's a classic Viva soundtrack and that's sounding pretty dated for the early 1980s. Yeah, by the time this was produced, the Escort was into its third generation. Very smart looking body on those Mark III Escort vans as well. Front wheel drive, much more advanced. This was considerably out of touch. But nonetheless, we'll see if it feels perkier than the old um, saloon. I think the answer already is yes. Okay, it's not ridiculously more brisk, but it does feel a bit more powerful. 
Yeah, we're up to 50 miles an hour and again, things are starting to get a bit buzzy. And by the time these came out, well, a lot more motorway in the UK. I don't think you'd want to be doing too much motorway with sh such short gearing. Yeah, even by 55, that is starting to get a little irritating. Oh, and there's a big difference. The brakes are um, considerably worse. Remember, they're quite snatchy and fierce in the servo and disc braked HA saloon. These drum brakes need a good shove and not very much happens at all. But still, I think, especially for a van, it's quite refined in here, quite peaceful. One rival that springs to mind is the Reliant Fox, of course. I used to own a Fox, and uh, that was much more buzzy, much louder, much less refined. This rides really, really well. I'm quite surprised at how well this rides. It's really quite comfortable. And it's a good comparison, that, because the HA van and the Reliant Fox use the same wheels. There's nothing else shared, but there is that. Yeah, they've even got the same little indicator as the uh, indicator indicator as the uh, HA Saloon, unsurprisingly perhaps. Yep, brakes, sort of. Best thing to do in a car with really poor brakes, take it down a single track lane. It definitely sounds a lot faster than it actually is. So we've got the short gearing to um, thank for that, but the same delicious snickety little gear lever, it's really rather nice. But I have to say, this seat, even after just a mile or so, it's starting to feel very uncomfortable. The back it just has no support at all. But I imagine these vans were very cheap to buy and also very cheap to run, that would have been the appeal. Uh, the downside was, much like the saloons, not a great record for rust. They would uh, soon vanish from our roads. And that's a bit of a shame. Well, there we go. That was the interesting comparison between an HA saloon from the 60s and an HA van from the 80s. Definitely a bit of an anachronism by uh, the early 1980s, but nonetheless, great to drive one in such beautiful condition. So uh, thanks to Hayden for letting me drive both of his Vivas and I'll see you in a future video. Farewell. Well, it's not